the same time, uh, doesn't it say that if somebody understands karma, Buddhist karma well, he or she understands most of the other Buddhist fundamentals, but is uh, becoming a better morally good person, uh, and I would say uh, understanding samsara very well, and then understanding also the not self, the highest level of, uh, because I think dukkha, unsatisfactoriness, and then um, anicca, impermanence, and dukkha, unsatisfactoriness, and then anatta is, the, is sort of the most difficult yeah. uh, uh, element to understand. And yeah. as you said, uh, it comes under the paramatta satcha, yes. not from the conventional truth. Yes. It comes from the uh, ultimate, ultimate truth. Uh, but although you see, I mean myself, at the level of uh, conventional truth, uh, where there is a doer, Mm. But the doer is going to be null and void, empty. Yes. Uh, at the at the level of the paramatta. Yeah. We are awakened to the non-existence of a doer. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. All right. Now let's unpack the misconceptions in kind of larger larger sense. Mm. The first misconception that is largely, I would say, popular is that our experiences, which we go through now in the past, maybe in the future. Uh, are being supervised by a supernatural supreme. person. Could be a god, could yeah. be uh, somebody else. A supreme being. Yeah, somebody. Yeah. So, uh, we know that Buddha rejected his idea. Yeah, yes. uh, so, what do you think? What, what do you think about why the Buddha rejected? Why isn't, isn't that so? Yeah. Uh, and then, maybe you can apply some of the Malaysian uh, Buddhist context to sort of understand for the audience here. Mm. The, the, the Buddha rejected this because he said, if you palm off your problems onto another entity, then you are uh, transferring the responsibility outside of yourself. Mm -hmm. So the Buddha says we have to take the responsibility for ourselves, that this was all created by us and within us. And therefore, going against this, yeah, you cannot uh, blame, you cannot put the blame on an external factor. You cannot say God did this to me. You have to admit that you are the creator and the destroyer of your own destiny. Okay. So now, however, the Buddha also did not deny the efficacy of prayer. And the, he understood that at lower levels, people cannot straight away jump and go into the higher states of meditation. It is, like the Buddha said, going into a, 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 an ocean. At the beach, it's very, shallow. very shallow. shallow. But the deeper you go, so you see that again how Buddhism is such a practical religion that he didn't expect us to become arahant overnight. He knew some found it very difficult. So, what he's saying is, while we reject the idea of a complete subservience to a creator, uh, and he, he controls our destiny, we are saying that we have to do it ourselves, but in the process, he does not deny the existence of God. He does not deny the existence of other powerful beings outside of ourselves who could help us in mundane ways. Mm -hmm. in, in mundane ways, he, they, they can help. And in the process of slowly, as we go deeper, we get less and less reliant on this. So in the Malaysian context, uh, or in that matter, in anywhere in the world, people cannot straight away, you know, become the top of the lotus flower. Yeah, they're still struggling. So to them, prayer is important. That's where in the Malaysian context, we would say we have Bodhi Puja. We go to the Bodhi tree when we are sick. We, we don't say, oh no, you know, there's only an imagination here. We would say, look... And, yeah. you, and you need the material culture for that. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. and you have the material you culture. Can't, you can't solve it by yourself. You gotta unleash. Un unleash. Yeah. yeah, you can unleash. But, but a time will come, according to the teacher, where you don't need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I have actually known monks who who didn't need, in spite of anything that was happening to them, he was just... Oh, I remember, you know whether I should mention the name, Venerable Gunaratna. Mm -hmm. uh, he was traveling 
from Washington to where he's at that time he was 80 years old. You know, was that they do? And I said, Bhante, you travel alone. You know, what if anything happened? He said, if anything happened, it happened. <laughs> Whether I'm inside an aeroplane or not. Now I certainly I'm 83, and I certainly. You was you want to travel time. alone, yeah? You experience, reflect that, that moment with your age now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That was about 20 years ago. Yes. I, even today, I wouldn't dare travel alone. Okay. You know? But for a month, that, nothing. He, he lived it alone all his life, yeah. in that sense. And so when he has time to go, he, he goes. Mm -hmm. you see? So he is, I am caught. To an extent that he is not, he is free to that extent mm. that he can travel where he goes. Yeah, uh, we asked Ajahn Brahms the same question: What happens in the plane when when you are, uh, uh, you are traveling alone? He said, "I'm not traveling alone. There's two hundred other passengers <laughs> with me." <laughs> mm -hmm. So, all right. So going back to the question, yes, you said that. Uh, uh, Yes, uh, some people blame uh, for an external entity, yes. supernatural God. Yeah. But some people praise that person too. Yeah. Maybe this person gave me this happiness, yeah. uh, rich uh, stuff, uh, my children and all that. So I think it goes, it works in both ways. Yeah. Yes. But the problem is that the Buddha says not everything yes. happens from, an, from a supernatural God. Yes. I would say... He does, not believe, he does not believe a supernatural God yes. at that point, but uh, but there are exceptions. So not everything happens that way, and a belief that there is somebody who is doing that right. could be erroneous. Yes. So how would you uh, sort of wind up that perception? Um, what I would say is, you see, uh, even if I am doing an action which mm -hmm. is depending or uh, 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 relying on an external source for my, even if there is such, mm -hmm. my intentions are purer mm -hmm. than if I have anger, hatred, greed, jealousy, whatever. But we should wean ourselves, the Buddha shows us, we should wean ourselves little by little, lifetime after lifetime, from this reliance on external forces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe one god, or maybe many gods, and bodhi pujas, and all mm -hmm. what, uh, whatever we do to please the god or enlist their mm -hmm. sympathy yeah. or their support, we should wean ourselves and f finally understand. We must not uh, think that uh, e everything is personal. Mm -hmm. we, we we have to move away mm -hmm. from this. Uh, personalizing the self and personal responsibility and all of that to that higher level. Okay? And that higher level comes from an understanding. It's not an intellectual mm -hmm. understanding of it's, it's, what it's is It's beyond right. the conceptualization. It's beyond conceptual, Beyond reasoning. Also. Beyond reasoning. Beyond language mm -hmm. even. You see? So when the Buddha's enlightenment occurs, it occurs at a level that's completely beyond our understanding. And we can only take it on faith. We can only take it on until it happens to us. Until that fish walks on the land, the fish will never understand instinctively through insight what land is. Okay? The fish won't understand that. Okay? The fish can talk about it, the fish can write books about it, but will not understand. You have to be, uh, I think in the Taoists believe the same thing, that unless you become the Tao, you can never understand the Tao.